Hello everybody, hope you're doing really well. So we're in Portsmouth today, or in Paul's Grove. We're at a place where a lot of you have probably explored, but today for my channel I haven't done it yet, so let's explore the uh, radio bunker of Paul's Grove. Come on. One of the most visited underground World War sites along the south coast has to be that of Paul's Grove Quarry Radio Station. It's probably for good reason due to its ease of access and because it forms part of Portsmouth's well documented World War II underground past. So in regards to its history, during World War II it was decided that an underground headquarters was needed to be built under Fort Southwick which is situated just above the chalk pit overlooking Portsmouth itself. But the role for the underground HQ became vital when it acted as the nerve centre for the invasion of Europe, known more commonly as Operation Overlord. So with that, in May 1942, the 172nd Tunneling Company Royal Engineers built a second underground site of which we are exploring to act as the radio station its purpose to act as a transmitting and receiving station for the underground HQ. In fact, the quarry in which it was built was the perfect location for this in more ways than one, because even though it was only half a mile away from the fort, the distance would be just enough to provide a solid and secure communications line, with the aerial mast being located directly above the bunker on top of the quarry site. Either way, this site, for the amount of explorers it has seen over the years, still retains that element of history that provides us with just enough of a snapshot of Portsmouth's secret underground World War II past, that with videos like this, no matter what its fate, it will never be forgotten. Right, so we've made it. Um, it's easy to get in, but my concern is coming out. So we'll have to see what happens, whether I die or not from falling down a cliff. <laughs> but I mean, plenty of you have done it. So uh, yeah, well, if it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. I suppose the only thing is again, I'm on my own. So we'll have to see how well I fare. I think I've got a route roughly planned out on the way down. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Right, so just for context, my head, I can now stand up. So let's say that's 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 at height. This is the furthest point that you can explore. There's obviously two uh, entrances, this one and the one round the opposite side. Treat it as like a treat it as like a horseshoe, really. So for some of you who've already been here, I've started from the opposite end where you would walk down the steps. Um yeah. Nice. I've uh picked a really warm day because obviously when you're climbing up chalk you want to try and get it as dry as possible, otherwise you're going to be slip sliding all over the place. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's lovely and cool in here. And this is our main chamber. So there's really not much to it, but it's, it's importance that obviously you've got to imagine that above us would have been the telecommunications or the radio communications towers and everything above us on the cliff. So, um, yeah, and obviously our engineers. I didn't bring a backpack or anything with me today. I packed really light. The idea was that, you know, like I said, uh, coming up is fine, but going down, total different kettle of fish. Like I said, in here, it's not that big, but you can see the chalk that they've dug into. And uh, I mean, you could argue 
let's argue for a second that this is in fairly okay condition. There's a little chamber there. I think that that was probably dug out later. I can't imagine that that was part of this actual uh, bunker system. Like I said, you know, a lot of people have done this, but for me, I've not, and it's an easy one to find, but it is a nightmare to get out of. Here's our infamous steps, which are actually surprisingly very uneven. I wasn't expecting that. And I'm assuming this is really where most of the communications would lie because there's a little trench there for cabling that we've seen a lot on our deep shelters. And as you know, in your history lesson, the people who were responsible for building this one were uh, actually responsible for a few of our deep shelters that we've seen. And again, obviously being in Portsmouth, we know that this place is riddled with underground workings. In fact, oh, should I, do I need to turn that off? I don't know. In fact, actually where we're located, there are a couple other sites within the original quarry that we could explore maybe at a later date. I'll probably need a couple of people with me on those. And then, this is what you're greeted with. I suppose if you sort of treated this as the main entrance, I, I would assume that a lot of people have used this one as the main one to get into. And then, annoyingly, I say that, although I probably can. Should we try? Yeah, let's do this. Come on. Let's try and uh, do this without hurting ourselves. And knowing that there is a very, very steep cliff down there. Now, unfortunately, this is a lot of gorse. So, I can't really grapple too tightly. I fear that I could fall down at any second. me into that chamber please don't tell me it's right the way around there oh blimey if it if it is i'm not doing that today you can bloody well forget that it'd be great if i can hold on to something i don't think i can hang on <laughs> holding on to stuff he says looking down at his impending doom oh yeah, round that corner, uh, there is the other addict shelter part that's there. And um, I'm not really fancying doing that today on my own. So, unfortunately, you're just going to have to bear with the fact that I'm now going to have to turn around. Oh! <sighs> Safety first and all that jazz. Oh dear, my camera work is shoddy, but trust me, the other, the shallow one is in there and I know probably a lot of you have done that, but I'm not going to, I don't really fancy doing that today. Oh gold, what can I hold on to is the question when you're here. Oh, there we go. And then looking out and down. Yeah, okay. Right, okay, let's wander back in. Fortunately, my torch isn't going to last too long, so we won't spend too long dilly-dallying today. But yeah, so around the corner, literally on the edge of the edge, is uh, another little shelter but there's no entrance so it's basically just a sort of hollowed out shelter that's in there so it would look like what you're looking at now but except one way in one way out and so it would be blocked on the opposite side so let's make our way down one more time these steps 
scarily are not as even as you think. Oh, here we go. Right. Okay. See, this isn't the longest video you've ever seen. It's probably not the greatest video you've ever seen. But it is one that I needed to do for the channel. I needed a... I think the irony is that I needed an easy one, he says. But there's no real easy thing about this. Because it's the climbing and then the coming down. And like I said, I'm not looking forward to going down. But I think I've planned a route round. Although, who knows. <laughs> I'll either be like Jack and Jill and tumble down the hill. Or I'll... Uh, do something a little bit more, hopefully, poetic. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, obviously, it's hard to be into context because, like I said above us, you would have had the radio mask. In fact, actually, I think the posts for the radio mask still are there. So that's interesting to note as well. Um, but yeah, apart from that, all good. So I think we've done it, everybody. I think we've given you a rough flavour of this place, you know. What, what is there to say when you could literally pre-type this in on YouTube and find so many other people's videos on this and probably so many other people's videos that have done a better job, to be fair. But, you know. I tried. <laughs> right, let's get out. Come on. Wow, uh, to say that was one of the most sketchiest ones that I've recorded on my channel to get down is no understatement. It proves that when you're on your own, it's really not wise to do these types of things. Now I know that obviously from somebody local would say, you know, you get a lot of the younger kids go out there and go in and out and everything else, and, but there's a group of them. <laughs> And they know that if one of them falls, <laughs> somebody's going to be there. But for me, on this one, unfortunately, I was, I know I say, but I was on my own. And it was not nice coming down. And really, it's a lesson for all of you out there is that you should never, ever go exploring on your own when it is something as risky as that. Because it is just unpleasant, I'm really unpleasant coming down. I put some new boots on today, especially for this. I picked the weather so it was as dry as possible because obviously as we know with chalk, if it gets wet, it's going to be sort of slimy. So yeah, we've done it for the channel. And I uh, just want to say thank you so much for watching. And like I said before, never, please don't do this one on your own. It's not worth it. It's, uh, I've got pinpricks of gorse and everything that I've been holding on to. So, but the most important thing is I'm alive because there was a moment where it was very touching. Guys, I was like, oh God, it don't look good. Anyway, love to all of you out there. Stay safe. Because history matters, please spread the word of the channel. And uh, take care. Ready? Come on, kapow.